Hey there, folks. So today, we're going to do some more Switch mods. So the intended, well, the, the end goal of uh, today's session isn't going to be to upgrade this Switch at all. I am just using this Switch as a, uh, a, a dummy uh, to test my method, to test my theories on. Uh, the end goal is actually going to be to upgrade this Switch. But not just this switch. This switch. So, the reason I'm practicing on this one, even though I want to upgrade these two, uh, is if this switch breaks, I mean, yeah, I'll be sad about it. If I break this switch in the, in the process, it'll suck, but replacing this one is a lot harder, and... If my method doesn't work at all, then I won't be able to upgrade this switch. So I want to try upgrading the storage in one of these bad boys. Uh, and the reason, again, that I'm using a big switch, even though I want to do it on a light, is because the storage module in the original switch is, well, it's a module. Uh, I've got one right here. You can see it's just this little PCB. Uh, there's a little connector on the end there. You just snap it onto the main board and you're good to go. The problem, as it is, is um, Nintendo, rightfully, uh, encrypts all of the storage on the device. Now, there's no feasible way to decrypt the uh, EMMC module outside of the Switch unless you have a way to extract the the console specific keys from the device. Now, if your switch is modified or it's hackable, then you can dump the keys no problem and this upgrade is as easy as just swapping on the new module, restoring a backup, expanding the partition and so on. Um, but I'm making it a point to try it with this console because I do not have the keys for this console. This console is not modded and I cannot modify this console unless I purchase a hard mod, which I'm not going to do. Um, this console, however, not modified either. At least uh, it has no software modifications on it. Uh, but it does already have a storage upgrade. So if I pop this open, uh, this is the laminated one I did a, a little while back. Um, do, 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 data management. If you look at the system memory, you can't really tell because I have um, quite a bit of stuff on it. But you can see I have 15 gigabytes free. And you can see the bar is about three quarters of the way through instead of half the way through. If I had a 32 gigabyte NAND, which is what this console came with, I wouldn't have 15 gigabytes free. I'd be 15 gigabytes over because I'm using about 45 gigabytes. So let us move data between system and SD card and that should show us uh, where we want move to system memory. I can I can move more stuff. There isn't really enough to move, I guess. But if we move the other way around, you can see I'm freeing up. Now I have 27 gigs free, 36 gigs free, 44, and so on. So yeah, I do have a 64 gigabyte module in this thing already, but I don't want to mess with this thing. I am playing a couple games right now, as you can see, uh, that don't support cloud saves. And yes, I take this thing online. Haven't had any issues yet. Please don't ban me, Nintendo. I'm not hacking. I just like messing with the hardware. Um, I don't want to mess with this Switch if I can avoid it, because if I break it, I could probably recover. But it's just more hassle than it's worth. Whereas this thing, you know, I have nothing on it. I don't really care. The only things that are on it are things that I installed just to test out, make sure that it's actually working, and it is. So uh, let's let's get on with it. Um, first off, if you want to upgrade the storage in one of these things, by far the easiest method is to pop that out, grab a newer one in a higher capacity, pop that in, and then you're done. Wow, it's that easy. Um, no, that's, yes, 99% of the people who need more storage space on their Switch, 
that's exactly what you can and should do, but that's, that's no fun, is it? Let's do it the hard way. I'm going to go ahead and extract the NAND module. And let's go from there. This console is missing a few screws. I have had it apart several times and I never put all the screws back in the last time I had it apart because some of them were stripped and it just seemed easier at the time to not deal with that whatsoever. So that's exactly what I did. All right. So two screws from the rails, you want the middle screw in each rail, uh, two screws on the bottom, one screw on the top, and then these four corner screws, and then we have to pop the kickstand off, pop the SD card out, and there's one more screw right there. Plus these four corners, I don't remember if I already mentioned those, but those aren't installed on mine. That comes right off. And we got about 8 million more screws. Oh, oh no, we can leave the game in. Shouldn't be too big a deal. I'm a little cautious about uploading this video because the last one that I saw that touched on the same process got removed. I don't know if that was Nintendo, I don't know if that was YouTube, I don't know if that was the uploader. Uh, but the difference here, I don't remember if that video touched on this or not, but we're not going to be dealing with decrypting any of the data. Um, Nintendo has it encrypted, and like I said, I don't have a feasible way of extracting the keys from this switch, so I don't have a feasible way of decrypting the data. So I am hoping, did I miss a screw? I'm hoping that I'm able to walk through this process, and even if it means I lose all of the data on my switch, I'm hoping that I can still upgrade it. All right, so once we get the shielding off, I'm going to set that at the back. The module is right there. We're just gonna pop that out. And, um, well, usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> usually this shielding stays there and there's a little bit of adhesive uh, holding it down. Um, personally, I don't mind that because it's going to help me tell this apart. Um, so I guess let me go ahead and set aside this switch. I am going to disconnect the battery, which is what I should have done before popping that out. I don't want it to boot up while there's no maintenance. I don't think it'll cause any issues, but let's just play it safe. All right, set that aside. And uh, I guess let's look at our donor here. So we're going to be using this tool to read and write the NAND. Previously to do upgrades of this sort, you had to do it from the switch itself, you had to load up a custom payload and boot into software called Hecate, Hecate, I don't know, H-E-K-A-T-E, -E, something like that. Um, and that allowed you to dump the NAND to an SD card and then you could swap out the module and then restore it from the software on the switch itself. But like I said, this switch isn't hacked. I don't have a way of hacking it, so we have to use some external tools. This is a open source tool. Uh, looks like it's done, so I can go ahead and unplug that. Uh, this is an open source tool called, uh, what is it, MMC BLKNX, or uh, I don't know. There's there's another name on the uh, on the Tindy page and the uh, GitHub. I'll go ahead and throw some links in the description if you want to check this thing out. But basically all it is is a um, internal SD card reader chipset. So this is the sort of thing that you'd find on a laptop mainboard connected up to uh, a, an SD card slot. So you slot in SD cards, you can read and write the data from there. Um, 
eMMC, which is what the switch uses for internal storage, is more or less a subset of the SD card standard, which means most SD card readers can read eMMC cards, which not all the features are available to us, but all we really need to be able to do is read and write data, which this will do. However, there is a caveat. We have to use Linux to uh, get all of the data off of this. So there are uh, two hidden partitions that Windows just cannot see, and it is a limitation of the driver. Um, there's nothing we can do about it. The easiest workaround is just use Linux and read it from there, but you need the boot zero and boot one partitions, and you cannot get those from Windows. Everything else you can do from Windows. You can get the raw data off of this thing, no problem, but you cannot get the boot zero and boot one partitions, and you need them if you want to replace the module. Which leads me to my next point. I bought an extra module. Um, I am going to back this one up while I have it out of the switch because, I mean, why not? Why, why not play it safe? Um, but I'm going to be working off of this module. So before I start doing the swap on this module, I guess let's go ahead and switch over to the computer here. I have my module seated within the reader. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my reader into my computer. And this is just a vanilla install of Ubuntu. Um, what is it, 12.10, whatever the newest version is. It doesn't matter too much. I'm comfortable with Ubuntu. It has all the tools that I need, so that's what I'm using. Uh, the only thing I did have to install was the GNOME Partition Editor, with uh, GPartEd, uh, which does come on the live disk, I believe, but not the actual install. A live disk will work just fine for this as long as you have persistent storage that you can write these images to. Uh, you need at least 32 gigabytes, or in my case, 64 gigabytes, because I'm backing up both NAND um, modules. Um, but once, ooh, once you've got your NAND module connected and plugged in, you can do a simple sudo fdisk-l, put in your hypersecure password, and that will go ahead and list all of the drives connected up to the computer. Uh, if we start at the top, we see a bunch of these loop devices. We don't care about any of them. We also should see, uh, there it is, dev SDA. That is the main storage device in this computer because I did an actual install. This isn't a live instance. Um, you can see I've got a 256 gig SSD in there, which is more than enough space for what we need. Probably just gonna format it after we're done here. Um, but we also see down at the bottom here, we see uh, device MMC BLK2 which is a 30 gigabyte, 29.12 gigabyte device. Uh, we are going to use the, oh wait, before we do that, I need to copy the backup I just made into the donor file, there we go. That way I'm not overwriting anything. Okay, so we're going to use the dd command, which is duplicate disk. Um, we are going to specify our in file, which is if, dev mmc, oop, forgot a slash, mmcblk. Uh, you see it's showing up on my device as two. The instructions say to use mmcblk0, but this is why we did fdisk to see where it's showing up. Uh, we're going to do boot zero, and then the output file, we are going to save to boot zero dot bin, Hit enter, that'll take just a few seconds because it's only a four megabyte partition. And then we are going to do the exact same thing for boot one. Make sure to change both file names, otherwise you'll overwrite something. That'll take just a few seconds there. And then we will do the raw NAND, which is the whole device. And that is gonna run and that is gonna take a solid 20 minutes or so. So we can let that run while we work on the actual NAND itself. Let me get this untangled so I can set this aside safely. 
All right. And forgive me if that text on the capture overlay is a little bit blurry. I am not recording locally because I was worried about uh, running into space issues because um, I have no idea how long I'm going to run on with this video. Uh, so I'm running it through my capture card instead. It seemed easier at the time. Um, okay. Also, it's not a very powerful laptop. I was worried I wouldn't be able to record and do file operations at the same time. Anyway, this is what we want to mess with. Let me get my vice here. Sorry, I don't store it in the best place. I keep it attached to my camera mount. Ooh, I don't know if I'll be able to jam this in my vise. Hmm. You know what, that'll work. I don't like it, but it'll work. I just want to hold everything in place nice and flat, but that doesn't look too flat to me. Okay. I'm not going to use that. I think I'm going to run into more issues if I try and use that. All right, I'll just solder off my desk. What's the worst that could possibly happen? All right, so here is what we need to do. I need to lift this chip and replace it with one of these. So I ordered three chips. Um, I ordered two 128 gig and one 256 gig chips. I mix them up. I'm guessing this one is the 256 gig because it's the only one in packaging. I'm gonna save this for another go. I'm not gonna let it be my first try. And we should only need one of these, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the other one back in the bag. Now, these are BGA chips, which means uh, they are surface mount to the PCB, and on the bottom side, they have a grid array of solder balls, hence BGA, ball grid array. Um, it's soldering these. Now, I, I, I'd be lying if I pretended I had a ton of experience soldering these. I don't. I have a lot of experience at this point with surface mount soldering, which is more or less same as BGA, except with BGA, the solder joints are underneath the chip instead of on the sides of the chip. But I have enough soldering at this point that I think the experience should transfer over. Now, in the case of this particular install, uh, most BGA chips do come with the solder pads pre-applied. So there's already solder on here that I can stick down. Not too worried about that. Um, so the process will be, I will need to heat this up until I can lift this chip off. And then I just need to clean the solder pads flat, uh, clean them, remove all the extra solder. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna use a little bit of solder wick and then just need to apply flux and stick that down. That should be it. Um, eventually when I do the switch, I'm going to have to pull that chip off, attach it to one of these boards so I can back it up, solder the new chip to one of these boards so I can write the backup to it, and then lift it from the board and then install it on the switch. And in that case, I'm going to need to use a stencil and uh, some solder balls. No, I'm not even going to open that. Doesn't matter. You can see it from here. I bought one of these. I actually bought several stencils. This is just the one that remains on my desk. And plenty of uh, little solder balls here. You can't really see them. Gravity being how, being what it is. But uh, pop that open there. You can sort of see them in there. But uh, the idea will be to line up the stencil with the uh, with the pads on the chip, put some balls in there, and then apply the balls. I'm not doing that today. That is definitely going to take some practice. Um, I've never done this before. I don't know if I want my first attempt to be on camera, but I think I will manage with this chip. Anyway, um, there are quite a few different standards as far as EMMC goes. Uh, I've I have already checked 
this chip should be compatible, so it should just be a matter of lifting the old chip, putting the new chip in. Yeah? Huh? Um, screw it, let's go for it. Uh, so first thing, let us pay attention of the to the orientation. So the dot is in the bottom left hand corner of this thing. You can see there's a little golden arrow on the board itself. And then the dot is on the bottom left of that corner. Same thing, so we'll just have to line that up. I think that's it. I think let's go ahead and get started. Flux is a necessity for this. And unfortunately, I don't even have the right flux. I don't have the flux I wanted to use. So I'm just going to gob some of this stuff in there. Gob it around the edges of the chip and hope that it works its way into the into the solder joints and uh, go from there. That is entirely too much. No, there's no such thing as too much flux. Never mind. Disregard. And like I said, uh, this is a spare module. This is not the module that I just pulled out of my switch. So if I destroy this thing, I'm out the 15 or so bucks that it cost, but I still have a working switch because I still have the other module. Uh, if I were working out of the off the module out of my switch and I destroyed it, that's, that's it for the switch. I'd need a new switch. Here goes nothing. I have my hot air station set to about 400. I'm actually going to bring it up. Bring it up to 446. And normally we'd want to preheat the board, but this board's so small that I'm just letting the hot air station warm up before getting my flux everywhere. And I guess let's go for it, see what happens. I'm gonna let the flux try and soak in under. I don't know that I'm gonna get much soakage. Now I just hit it with hot air until, uh... I'm not gonna use my nice tweezers. As you can see from the bubbles coming out from the sides of the chip, the flux did soak in. So now I just gotta hit it with hot air until, and, and gently nudge it until the chip moves freely from the board. Next time I think I'm going to solder on top of something because my silicone mat is bubbling up. Alright, I think we're there. Uh oh. I'm going to lift this straight off. There we go. And that's it. Well, that's not it. We're halfway there. Whew. That was exciting. Look at that. Let that cool for a second. Set that right there. Oh, and I forgot to turn on my soldering iron.
This would have been so much easier in a vise. So I could slide that wick around. But I think that's nice and clean. Clean it up, make sure that I didn't miss any solder. We have to remove all of the solder because we need the chip to be perfectly flat. And since the chip already has solder balls applied to it, we'll be good. Do be careful of that capacitor next to the chip. I've been lucky so far that I haven't disturbed it, but there's still time. Oh. This is going to require a lot of cleanup. <laughs> That's okay. Alright, so if all went well, we have that. It's nice and flat. No solder balls left. I'm going to leave that in its disgusting puddle. And we're going to apply even more flux. Most of the time, boards have a little outline of where the chip is supposed to go, and I don't have one here, and soldering this thing off-center is a big concern, because if I do that it won't work. I'm going to pull out yet another module. Just have them side by side. Okay, that's right. So on the top we can see it's very close to that little capacitor but there's enough space to get in there so I think I'll just need to line up with these bottom vias and that top capacitor and then uh, center it and we should be good. So if I were to take that, drop it down, squish the flux I guess. Suppose it's worth trying to trace an outline on the module before lifting it. And this is exactly why they make stations for doing this sort of thing, where the computer lines everything up. Alright, that looks right. Stick that back in its sad puddle. And uh, here goes nothing, I guess. Let that heat up a little.
Ooh. See, that's what I was scared of. The flux boiling over and then the chip just moving wherever it wants to go. This might be totally the total wrong flux for this. Well, I know it is. But it's what I got, so it's what I'm gonna try. I'm confident I can recover this if necessary. I think we're about there. Come on. <laughs> One of the reasons why a vice would have been a good idea. So as you can see, I'm bumping this thing, and the whole module is moving with it now. So I think the solder is sufficiently applied. I'm going to remove the hot air and let that cool down. That smoking can't be good. Alright, so next step, I'm going to let this cool off and I am going to clean up as much flux as I possibly can from this thing, especially from the uh, connector on the bottom. And I guess we'll let the uh, module keep backing up the, uh, the original NAND, um, since I can't do anything while that's running anyway, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, that's soldered down. Can't see under it, which is usually not a good sign. But it could just be full of flux down there, so definitely gotta get the flux out of the connector. Hey, right, I'll be back. All right, so I think I've got that sufficiently cleaned up. And the other module is done backing up. So just to, I don't know, get this clean up finally, I'm just going to hit it with some hot air and make sure that all of the isopropyl gets a chance to evaporate, especially the stuff that's under the chip.
it would be best to uh, toss this in an oven give it a few days but I don't really have that kind of time nor do I actually have an oven to toss this in um, do as I say don't do as I do sort of thing It's not bubbling anymore, so that should be it. <sighs> All right. So I'm a little concerned. Um, when I was perhaps cleaning up the original solder balls, I may have tweaked the board a little bit. It looks ever so slightly warped. Uh, it might be good enough for this purpose, but I'm worried that it's not. Uh, but anyway, let us go ahead and move on. We are going to go to the computer again. Let me get that module. So this module has finished, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. It should have been mounted read-only, so as long as it wasn't a read operation in progress, which there shouldn't have been, then we should be good to go. Plug in that module. And let us run fdisk again. Let's make sure it's recognized. So, that is excellent. So down here, right at the bottom, I see dev mmc blk2. 116.48 gigabytes, which is perfect. That is exactly what we want. So let me go ahead and flip this up because I got to type some commands. And even though I'm capturing the footage, uh, let's, uh, let's try it out. Okay, so now we want to do the exact same thing that I did before, except reversed. So we want to uh, sudo dd Uh, except we're going to swap the OF and the IF. All right. That's one. Or that's zero, I guess. Let's do boot one. Oh, wait, no, that's not done because operation not permitted. Because this thing is mounted in read only, we need to oopsie doodle. We need to log in as super user and we need to change a few permissions here. System block MMC BLK to force read only. And then we will do the same thing for boot zero and boot one. And then we can log out of super user. And let's try that again. Output file, input file, yep. Boom, that's one. That's two. And where's my raw NAND? Input file is the raw NAND. Output file is the chip itself. And we let that run. And so here is another part of the video where I gotta pause because that is going to take a solid 15 to 20 minutes to run, so I will be right back. Oh, good lord, it's finally done. Okay, so now for unplugging it. Try another F disk. 
and all the partitions are showing up. Uh, you might notice that that last one is showing up as 26 gigabytes, and that is to be expected. Uh, but all the other partitions are showing up. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and yank this out. I'll leave the computer here. And let's take a look at the switch now. So I went ahead and threw the original NAND back in and booted the thing up, make sure it was still working. And I made sure that it was up to date because if this works the way I think it might, then I might have to do a system update and I want to be able to use the original flash as well. Um, and sometimes updates burn e-fuses and I don't want to be able to not roll back. So it's at 13.2.0, which is fine. Uh, there weren't any updates. Totally forgot to check before starting this. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Pop the battery out. And I'm going to pop the flash out again. And we're going to try my modded one. I haven't done anything to this aside from restoring my backup. I just want to make sure that it actually works before putting any more work into it. Oh, I've got to plug the battery back in. Nintendo logo is a good sign. So is the Switch logo. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so that should start up. We can go into settings, data management, and you see that it does not recognize the full capacity. It says I only have 8.8 .8 gigs of free space, uh, but I do have a few things installed, um, like Fortnite. Oh no. Um, but that's okay. We just wanted to make sure that it actually booted up. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. And pop that out, pop that out, and now we need to go back to the computer once again. Plug that into my adapter, plug the adapter in here. All right. Let me pull up my cheat sheet here. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to step through all of these steps without the um, without the console's decryption keys, but let's try it anyway. Disk L, oops, forgot to do sudo. So we can still see that my drive is connected. It has all the same partition numbers, MMC BLK2. So now, we need to remember that MMC BLK2, that is the important part. So now we are going to try and fix the partition table without, act, without messing with any of the data, and uh, let's see what happens. I, I mentioned earlier that I installed uh, the gparted tool, GNOME Partition Editor. We're actually not going to need it. I forgot that we use gdisk for this. Dev MMC BLK2. Uh, I forgot the pseudo. All right. So we are going to use Command I on partition eleven. This will get us the GUID for the user partition. We will need that, so I'm going to copy that. Open up a text editor and just drop it right in there. I will need this partition GUID code later. Next, we need to delete it. Write the changes to the disk. 
Uh, tells us, warning, the secondary header is placed too early on the disk. Do you want to correct it? Yes, we do want to correct it. And then, yes, we want to write changes to the disk. And we need to refresh the partition layout, kpart x dev mmc blk2. I don't have kpart x. I don't know why it says to use that. Let's try it. Oops, duh, apt. And we need to run that with admin. So we do sudo. And then we need to run gdisk again. And we will create a new partition. It automatically selects 11. Uh, and it should automatically fill in the size for us. Uh, this is the first sector, we will use the default. The last sector, we will also use the default. And the hex code or GUID, this is the one we save. Can't just paste. Enter that. Now we need to do an expert command change partition eleven. And then uh oh, did I do this backwards? I did do it this backwards. Uh, so I'm going to randomize that. Uh, wait, I can just exit out of that. That won't write changes to the disk. Yeah, okay. Let's start over. G disk. We will make a new partition, default, default, and then for the GUID, this is the partition code, which I thought I had correct. Let me double check. Nope, I was doing everything right. I could have just kept going. Enter that code. So when it asks for the hex code or GUID, that is the partition GUID code on line number two that we recorded earlier. And now we need to go into expert mode, change partition 11 GUID. And now we need to get the other one, one right below it, the unique GUID, that one. Paste that in. Go back to the main menu, and then we will change partition 11. The name we want to set to user, all caps. I don't know if it matters, but we want it to be as OEM-like as possible. And now we need to set some attributes. So we will go back into expert mode. A for attribute, partition 11. And... We hit zero. And 
I think we're done. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that's it. We'll hit enter to exit. Informa ooh. Yeah, that's fine. Information on partition 11, we should have, I'm gonna check it against what I recorded earlier. Partition GUID code is the same. Unique GUID is the same. First sector is at 2.6 gigabytes, which is perfect. Last sector is at 116, which is also perfect. So that sets our size at 113.9 gigabytes. And it is the user partition, perfect. So now we will write that, yes to approve, and we should be done. So what we've just done is we've written the partition table to this device. Now, we didn't actually change the partition itself, so we're gonna have a little bit of a mismatch. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, and plug it back into the switch, and if I boot this up normally, it should still work. Oh, every time. Gotta plug the battery back in. Nintendo logo, good sign. Does. And if we go into data management, I believe we're still going to have eight and a half. Yeah, eight and a half. Okay, so now my theory is we can turn this off. And if this is documented anywhere, I apologize. I haven't been able to find it, but I am fairly certain we can just reformat this thing and reclaim our space. So to try that, I'm going to set this flat sure it's not on top of any screws or anything. I'm going to hold both volume up and volume down and power. I'm going to let go of power when I see the logo, but I'm going to keep holding volume up and volume down. I don't know how long. There we go. Maintenance mode. So now we want to initialize the console. Continue, continue, continue. Initialize. And let's see if that does what I want it to do. We're going to have to walk through the setup again. We're going to lose all the data on the console, but uh, we don't really have a choice without the uh, encryption keys. The next step normally would be to plug the NAND module into a Windows computer now, instead of a Linux computer, and then we can use hack disk mount to mount the partition, and then we just format it to match the size. Uh, well, back up the data, format it to match the size, and then restore the data. Uh, but I'm hoping if we just initialize it from recovery mode, um, we can skip two of those steps, because the switch can decrypt its own NAND. I can't decrypt it outside of the switch, though. And unfortunately, because it is encrypted, if this doesn't work, I have no options. But I guess... I guess we'll be back in eight minutes and see what happens. And I've got Joy-Cons here for when we need to walk through the setup.
Right near there on the left. Here we go, moment of truth. Ah, still only shows 30 gigabytes. Okay. Well, shoot, that was a bit of a waste of time, wasn't it? Um, well, oh well. I don't know what else to do without the uh, console-specific keys. So, you, you can upgrade your NAND, I guess, without... Um, without needing the console keys, but you can't actually make use of it without them. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. It is what it is, though. I guess let's go ahead and uh, kill this. We still gotta put this back together. Put the original NAND back in. Um, if you are lucky enough to get the keys from your console and you can actually complete that reformatting step, then you will need to uh, make sure your new NAND is actually stuck down. Uh, if it's just you know floating around in there loosey goosey, a good whack could deseat this connector, and then your switch won't boot properly anymore unless you take it apart and reseat it. But oh well, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and reassemble. Whoop. I'll get it eventually. Nonetheless, learned a few things. Um, like I learned that if I want to upgrade the storage in my Switch Lite, I will need to hack it. Even if only for the moment. Uh, once the new partition is formatted, you do not need to have the console hacked anymore. You just need to boot a payload to get the uh, decryption keys. And that's pretty much it. You can do everything else from with external tools. But since we can't get the decryption keys, there's not much else we can do here. At the very least, though, I can jam this into my uh, original model. My other model, rather. Oh, what am I missing? Back. There we go. But with that, should be working perfectly fine. Ooh, but I'm missing a screw. That's inconvenient. But hey, it's back where it was. I'll find that screw later. Hopefully it's not on the inside. Oh, it's stuck to the back of my tape, I see.
But hey, like I said, at least we learned something. I learned why I wasn't able to find um, the information I wanted, uh, why it wasn't documented anywhere, because it doesn't work. But hey, you know, if it worked, I think that would have been pretty neat. But unfortunately, that's what it is. And we must move on. But it's installed. Should be booting games just fine. Going to have to pair our Joy-Cons again. But hey, I didn't break the switch. And I did have to format this thing, so it might have delinked my account. Uh, it still has the save locally, though. That's fine. I don't remember the buttons. I already forgot. Have to go to the PC. Not that PC. The other PC. Stamp on that. Kill that. And let's just double check that it backs up. And we're good to go. So I didn't break the switch, which is one of the goals. <laughs> uh, and I did successfully create a 128 gigabyte NAND module. Uh, the next step. Um, and sorry guys, but I'm going to do this off camera because it does require some tools that Nintendo is very happy to, um, issues C and D's over. So, um, I will be using, like I mentioned earlier, a combination of Hakati, Hecate, um, hack disk mount, and the keys that I already have extracted from my other switch, and I will add that on here, and I'll have to walk through the exact same terminal commands that I already walked through on the Linux PC that I have, but it should be pretty simple. Um, go ahead and check out the description. I will throw plenty of links in there, including a text-based guide on how to do exactly what I did in the terminal um, with a few extra steps, including the actual formatting of the partition, which I was not able to do because I don't have the, dec the, de <laughs> the decryption keys. There we go. Uh, also throw a link to this thing. Pretty darn neat. Um, again, I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to mention it again. But without the decryption keys, there is very little we can do to the actual console itself. We can mess around with the storage all we want, but the partitions are encrypted. We can manipulate the raw data and the partition table itself, but without the decryption keys, I can't edit the partition at all. And you saw, I, I was hoping the switch would be able to look at the um, partition table and go, oh, this is supposed to be a 128 gigabyte partition. So let's reformat it as that. No, unfortunately the switch can't do that. Um, and it makes sense. This storage isn't normally supposed to be swapped out. Maybe, just maybe it's compatible with the 64 gigabyte module if I did that. Um, because there are actual 64 gigabyte switches on the market now and not just the dev units. By the way, if you ever get a 64 gigabyte NAND module, double check it. And if it says Odin on there instead of hack, or it has like X1, X2, X3, or X4 or something like that, definitely make a backup of it before you overwrite it. Um, in my other switch here that I already did the storage upgrade on, this bad boy, 
Uh, this has exactly one of those. It has one of those Odin modules uh, jammed in the back here. I'm not, I'm not going to pull it apart. It's too much effort. Um, and that was a that was either a prototype switch or a dev unit. I'm fairly certain it was a prototype because the switch was originally spec for 64 gigabytes, and Odin is the code name for the switch. Um, NX is also code name. I don't know. Either way, uh, Odin was the hardware code name. NX was the project, I guess, and um, I overrode it. I regret it. There's no going back at this point. Um, silver lining, it was probably encrypted, and I probably wouldn't have been able to decrypt it even, even if I posted it somewhere else and given it to someone. There's no chance anything would have ever come of it, come from it, but we'll never know because the data's gone. Uh, so if you have one, make sure to back it up. Um, but if not, carry on, and I hope... This was helpful in some way, and if not helpful, at the very least entertaining, and I will uh, catch you all next time. Hey, just a quick follow-up to uh, that storage thing here. So here is the uh, prototype storage module that I had in my uh, other switch. You can tell it's a prototype because it says Odin EMMC X1. Uh, Nintendo puts X board designations on any of their prototype hardware. This is no exception. So when I bought this 64 gigabyte module on AliExpress, I was expecting something that someone had, you know, they'd, they'd taken a regular module, popped the chip off, popped on a 64 gigabyte, and then sold that to me. But it turns out this came out of a uh, prototype console, or possibly at the very least um, was destined to be installed in one, but then was extra. I don't know. I never dumped it. I immediately overrode it and I regret that. But the fact that this is out should say that, uh, or should show that I have it installed in my other switch. Um, I ripped this thing apart, swapped out the modules. Well, did a backup, ripped it apart, swapped it out, the, swapped out the module, restored the new module, walked through all the steps that I just went through. And then once I had finished all those steps, I was able to plug this thing into my PC get the storage mounted, reformatted, and then copy my data back over. So if we close that out, uh, of course, I couldn't do this on the other switch because the other switch isn't hackable. This one is, and I needed that to get the uh, EMMC swapped in. So as you can see, we've got the new one swapped in. You can see it's showing up as a 120 gig partition, Samsung, yada, yada, um, my concerns, however, are that the estimated life and reserve used are not showing up properly. I don't know if that's just because I literally just installed it and it needs time to gather that information. The other concern I have is that the max file transfer speed of this module is only 200 megabytes a second or megabits, I guess. I don't know. No, big B is bytes. Anyway, uh, the old module, 64 gigabyte supported 400 megabytes a second and the 256 gigabyte chip that I have also supports 400 megabytes a second, but it is what it is. Let's try a quick benchmark just for context because I had a hard time finding this information. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's only rating at 178 megabytes. So it's by no means slow, just not nearly as fast as my old one. Uh, one thing I did notice though is that the write cache on this new chip is 64 megabytes, whereas the write cache on the um, 64 gigabyte chip was only four megabytes. So maybe the write cache being that much bigger will make a significant difference in um, like day-to-day -day use. I'm sure moving around large sets of data will uh, will be slower, but it is what it is kind of expected that to go quicker. Let me leave it. Might as well. Where's my... Oh, I suppose I can put the rest of the screws in while I'm waiting. I never actually fully reassembled this thing.
non-magnetic my butt. It was quite, quite disappointing not being able to get this chip in the other switch, but it is what it is. Um, I did try a few extra things after the video, just out of curiosity there. Unfortunately, I still wasn't able to get it. I'll just flip it backwards. Um, notably, I don't remember if I filmed this part, but I did try resetting it from... Uh, the recovery mode that didn't do it. Um, I mean, it reset just fine, but it didn't. It didn't format. It turns out the switch is not capable of formatting its own partitions. Uh, another thing I tried. This was more on a whim. I didn't think it would work, but screw it. Uh, you can still mount partitions with this thing, at least, even without the crypto key, but the data turns into garbage. So I tried doing that and then reforming at, reformatting it anyway. All that did was brick the install. And I had to restore from a backup just to get it working. Or um, more accurately, I just swapped in the old memory module and it was back up and running just fine. But from what I can tell, without the encryption key, without being able to just mount the partition directly on a computer with the with the correct encryption key, there's just no way to do it. Alright, so here is the result of my benchmark. Nothing too spectacular. Doesn't give us any information. Doesn't give us any useful information because I didn't run a before and after. Um, I'll have to swap this in at some point. But the problems with that are that this thing does not have custom firmware, so it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get that back in there. But, let me notice, my switch should be booting. I haven't actually tested this yet, but, or at least, I have tested the new chip, and it does seem to work. Uh, I have not tested it since I expanded the partition, however. If we go into settings, data management, Hey, look at that system memory, free space, 73.6 gigabytes. How about that? All right, move data. Let's put something on the system memory. How about Fortnite? That was a bad example because I should boot it up after moving and make sure that everything still works. Um, I guess it's going to take a while. So, I guess there's another benefit to making sure you get a faster module, because I may have just significantly increased the load times of all of the games on my system. I'll have to uh, use it and let you guys know. And, again, like I said at the beginning, probably like an hour and a half, two hours that way in the video. The easiest way to get more memory is to just put a bigger SD card in it. And for 99% of use cases, that is just as good, if not better. And yet, here we are with me messing with this shit. But anyway, it does work. Uh, but to actually expand the partition, you do need to have your encryption keys, uh, which means a V1 unpatched switch or a hard mod. Um, I don't have a video and I don't plan on making one on hard mods and if you have a V1 unpatched switch there's nothing to do you just you just need a jig and then a way to inject payloads and, and that's pretty much it um, but I'm not gonna go over any of that either because um, it's way too adjacent to piracy for my own uh, comfort so if you know you know if not sorry guys you'll have to do a little bit more research on that but I will go ahead and throw links down to the description to a very nice text guide to complete all of these steps. In fact, it's the one that I followed, so you'll probably see a lot of familiarity there. But otherwise, 
That's all I got, and I'll catch you all next time.